Hello and welcome to part two of project one. Hopefully you remember what you did in part one and the description of the project. So a quick overview of the description and what we did in part one. You're supposed to input a function is u, which takes four numericals. The first numerical is the left and right border. The second is the top and the bottom. Third is the spaces between the characters and the fourth is the font size. Given these, you're supposed to output ASU in a bounding box. In part one, we discussed the horizontal and the vertical lines, the number of dashes that you need to draw a horizontal and a vertical line. So the code should look something like this. And finally, we came up with drawing this box. In case of this, where we draw a square 2, 2, 10, and 3, the horizontal line required 53 dashes, and the vert there were 19 vertical lines that we had to draw. In part two of this project, we will be replacing the center portion of this box with the characters A, is you. So we'll be looking at how to draw these characters ASU. Now A is made up of font size times three by font times font size times 15 for writing one character A. Similarly for S and U. So we will discuss how we can create the character A and I will leave it to you for your better judgment to understand how to do S and U, which is very similar to doing A. In my view, the best way I would like to look at it is as rows and columns. Every letter is made up of five rows and three columns. And we need to choose whether to put stars or spaces within the rows, within each cell that is represented by these rows and columns. For example, if you take the first cell that is represented by zero and zero, we need to put font size by font size number of stars. In our example, we took font size of three. So we are getting three stars by three stars, totally making it nine stars in this. Similarly, if we take the cell one by one here, which is our fifth cell, we will be representing it with font size by font size number of spaces. Now using this method of putting in spaces or stars, we can create our characters, A, S, and U. Now let's look at how do we code in putting these in one particular cell and then expand it to doing it for all the other cells. So if you take this one particular cell, the best way to go about doing it is row-wise. Given a particular row, you decide what will be the number of, based on the number of columns, what would you be pr uh, printing in that place? Will it be a star or a space? In this case of this cell, zero, zero, the code would look something like this. It's row zero to row font size, that is these three, and it is column zero to column font size, that is these three. And what do we have to put within this? Is stars. So what we do is write font size number of stars by followed by incrementing the row by one and then printing again font size number of stars. That is how we can print stars in this cell. Now for the cell one by one, what would you do? How would you print about go about printing the spaces? Well, the logic is very similar to what has to be done here, except that we will be doing spaces in place of stars. Now doing this for all these other cells is quite simple. That leads us to this code. 
So here we are considering column zero and for column zero, all the rows from top to down are represented by stars. That is this three by 15, all these are stars. Second case is row column two. Again, all the rows are given by stars. So that is this again, three by 15. The difference comes only in column one, where we have either stars or spaces. That is, if it is line one, line three, or line four, we are drawing spaces. That is one, one, three, one, and four, one, we are drawing spaces. Whereas if it is zero, one, and two, one, we are going to draw stars. Remember, it is font size width of stars, and we repeat this process for font size number of lines. So that is given in column one. Now calling this function draw a multiple times will help us draw the entire character. And similar to this, plan out how you should draw yes and you. Now putting parts of what you've learned in part one and part two, you should be able to output this ASU. So it's simple. So you draw one horizontal line followed by a vertical line times top bottom margin. Then you start drawing your cells. What does your cell do or draw content? What does it do? It draws A, draws some spaces, draw S, draw some spaces and draw U followed by some spaces. So remember by what I'm telling you that this code is incomplete. It's only indicative of what you should do to complete this entire program. Once you have finished drawing the characters, again, you draw horizontal vertical lines and a closing horizontal line. So you see, once you have understood this, you should be able to draw an ASU in this format within a bounding box. So now let's look at the entire code as it is. So here is my code representing the entire thing. It's about 180 lines, not much because what you do for A, U and S are repetitive tasks. And let's run this in gprolog and see how it works. So let me go to file, consult, asu.st. Okay, so let me run, uh, run consult again. So there it is. And then I need to do asu. We had given this two comma two, comma 10, comma three. Putting the dot, that's the output. Well, remember that there are some quarter cases. That is, if I give ASU and I give a font size of zero, everything being zero characters, what happens? It throws an error. Program this in and see what should be your output. So, sorry, in the previous case, I had given capital ASU, so I did not understand. Prolog is case sensitive. So it says all arguments must be positive integers. What if I give a character in one of the place? So let me replace any one of them by zero or any one of them by an alphabet. Try and understand how this has to be done, where you say that your input should be positive integers. There is a function called integer, which takes in a term and checks whether the term is an integer or not. And you can use slash plus integer to verify if something is not an integer. 
says yes. And if I remove the slash, slash plus, it says no. Now let me replace A with the five and that says yes. So use this function to check whether it's a numerical. And also, if it is above zero. Thank you and best wishes for getting this project done quickly.